Hey guys, another video of me playing with this ring mold that I found found from Slumpies. Uh, this is an old one that I bought off of somebody uh, used. You may be able to find some used. Um, there's some effort to see if Slumpies or some other uh, company will make a similar version. Some of you may just have this in your stash. And so I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with it. So uh, I think I'm glutton for punishment. I'm gonna chop a whole bunch of cane uh, like I've done in a previous video and I'm going to stack it on end and full fuse it in here. This is sprayed very well with zip so that everything releases well. And the cane I'm going to use, so a lot of you know that I'm a fan of Lori Moreno and Wilderness Glass, Wilderness Glass is on Etsy. And Lori sold a bunch of twisty cane and these were in a um, kind of a seconds sale that she had, uh, gosh, it might've been around Black Friday. And it was bundles of, of twisty cane at a, at a steep discount. And as I look at it, some of these are flowers that uh, I think are still beautiful. Maybe they're kind of small. In, in any event, there was a lot of clear around it or something. And Lori wasn't pleased enough to sell these as part of her regular mix and was selling them as twisty cane. But there are enough in here that I think look pretty cool that I'm gonna go ahead and pick out the best ones. I'm gonna chop them up using my snappy chopper. If you're interested in that, it's sold by Colors for Earth. It's not inexpensive, but it is so worth it. And so uh, you'll see me using that because I'm gonna move through it rel relatively quickly. If you're interested in that, the link is in the video notes on YouTube. There's always information in the video notes on YouTube. So get used to figuring out how to find those. Click on the, the headline if you're in YouTube or click on more or something, but there's uh, firing schedules. There's links to where you can purchase things. So uh, get familiar with the video notes on YouTube if you're not already. But I'm gonna pick out some of the best. I'm gonna chop these up. Then I'm going to arrange them in my mold and uh, I'm gonna do this on a, on a time lapse just to speed everything up. And then I'll show you what they look like when they come out. these rings these little flower rings are super cool so they popped right out of the mold I need to clean these up a little bit but um, they look great so I think the flowers are fun I think I like the bottom a little bit more because it's almost like firing upside down so there's a little bit more they're a little more crisp along the bottom so I think I would put these I'm gonna put these on some glass bottom up the crisper side up now uh, and I'm gonna do a full fuse and fuse, I have three rings and I'm gonna fuse them into uh, a little plate or a little bowl or something, but I think, um, I think they're fun. So that's what's gonna happen there. Now, as you know, that thing has more rings to it. And so uh, I just used a frit blend that I have and just put some uh, random frit in the outside rings. Those look really dark. Um, and I have a light table, I just don't know. They're, they're real colorful. I don't think this is gonna focus correctly for you to see this. Um, yeah, you can kind of see the transparency there. I don't know if it's blurry or not. Um, it looks better in person than I think it's coming across because this light table is kind of playing with the, the camera a little bit. Um, if I lift this up. I don't know if you can see that transparency. Anywho, um, I think these are cool too. So I'm gonna use these in a project I'm gonna go ahead, I know you're gonna get tired of this ring mold because you can't necessarily get it. So I'm gonna fire two projects. I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do with both of these, get the layups done, show them to you in the kiln and fire them. All right, I told you I would tell you the layup once I had them in the kiln. This one was just, a, uh, this is an exploration. <laughs> so these are two layers of thi uh, clear tecta, not thin, just three millimeter clear tecta. I put a thin layer of powder in between just for bubble control. And then I chopped up those rings and laid them on here kind of haphazardly, sprinkled some of that original frit 
uh, mix, which is just my own kind of blend of nonsense that I put together. And uh, I'm going to full fuse this. I know I'm going to have to cold burk the edges because it's going to get a little lumpy around the edges and stuff, uh, but that's okay. So I don't know. We'll just see how this one turns out. I'm a little skeptical, but could be cool. And then uh, this one, I cut a really cool piece of yellow and green streaky for underneath, put some clear powder in between, and then capped it with clear and put my rings. And the reason I arranged these floral rings like I did is because I intend to use the Hilo uh, bowl mold from uh, Creative Paradise. And I think uh, that will look really cool. Uh, and I've tried to do the rings and the pattern such that uh, it works with that mold. So you'll see what I mean once it fires and I slump it. So there you go. There are the two pieces. I'm putting them into the same schedule. I will post my schedule in the video notes on YouTube as I always do. And uh, I don't know, cross your fingers. All right, look how awesome that is. And I really didn't even get very many bubbles. There's just a few that are in there, <clears throat> but that field of flowers uh, is really fun. I mean, they distort a little bit as they kind of lay out, but I just think it's cool. I'm really excited about this. So this looks great. I don't have to do anything to it. I'm going to put it on the mold and slump it and see what it looks like. Here's the other piece. I do have to do a little bit of cold working, as I thought, uh, just around the edges. You see where it blobs out just a little bit there. So I'm going to just take that to the grinder and just uh, grind those edges down uh, to be a little bit more uniform with the rest of the piece. There's where it comes out a little bit too. Uh, and then I'll do a fire polish on that to clean those up, and then I'll slump this one as well. But generally, I'm I'm really pleased with this. The the rings spread out and thinned out a little bit, and so that allows the transparency of that glass to come through. And looking at it, it looks rather dark on the video, but in person, it looks pretty pretty cool, um, pretty sweet. So I'm gonna do that cold working, then I'll do a fire polish, and then uh, I will slump it. Here's this lovely piece. So I've, I've um, just put it on, uh, after I full fused it, it came out nice and glossy. I put it on this mold. I don't even know what this is. It's a plate mold of some sort. Let's see here. Glass Pro 11 inch. No idea. This is clearly not 11 inches, but I just kind of centered it in here and uh, it gives me this nice lip on this. I think I'm going to sell this as something of a celebration plate, like maybe a special birthday plate or something like that. That's just what it feels like to me. It feels like party. Uh, so colors are really cool. I'll take pictures because I think they'll show that a little bit better, but uh, really pleased with this one. So fun use of those rings and uh, pleased with the way this came out. Well, uh, it always, it's always something with me. Um, so I slumped this and it's gorgeous. I love it. I love this mold. I love that high wall that you get. Um, but I just eyeballed it and I didn't get this centered. So I really wanted the ring to be centered with the flat bottom in the bowl here. And as you can see, it's more off center to the left. So um, I have three options. One is to just accept it as it is and say, look, it's beautiful and take it for that. Um, but looking at it straight on, I'm going to see that every single time. So option two is to put it back in the kiln and fire it flat again. I'm a little concerned given this high wall that this might tip in. It probably wouldn't, it would probably lay down, but I don't know how flat it's really gonna get. And so option three is to kind of put it back in this mold in a kind of a cockamamie fashion and see if I can line it up better this time and re-slump it and see if that'll work. So that is going to be what I try to do. So I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, it may jack up the whole thing. It may ruin my project. Um, and if so, then I guess that's my sacrifice in uh, the spirit of all of us learning. So anyway, I'm gonna try to figure this out, eyeball it carefully, I'm gonna clean it up, carefully put it back in there, and I'm going to re-slump it again, and fingers crossed, it turns out okay. Success. <laughs> so I put it back in for the exact same slump schedule, and I just kind of, you know, as you saw, I put it in there at the appropriate spot, appropriate angle. Now I'm getting fingerprints on it, but it fired perfectly. So there is, that I can tell, absolutely no artifact of the original slump. And um, so there you go, that, that worked. Uh, you know, your results may vary, but I'm real pleased with this. So I'm really happy with this bowl. I love, love, love this angled design. I hope you learned something through the creation of both of these bowls. And, um, you know, subscribe, because I got lots more stuff that's always in the hopper. Hope everybody's doing well and uh, get out there and fuse. Catch you later. Bye-bye.